Willie Geist, along with Natalie Morales. Al's down in Virginia, keeping an eye on that storm. We're going to check in with him in just a couple of minutes. But we've got a very special guest with us this morning for Take 3. Gail Simmons is, of course, special project director for Food & Wine magazine and a judge on Bravo's Top Our Chef. Our favorite. Hi. Good to see you. Hi. It's great to be here. I like this very comfortable couch. You like the bench? Yeah, yeah the bench setting here? The bay window. I think yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah, Everybody has a view of you. Exactly. Yeah, so let's talk about the finale. Uh, yes. Season 10. Season 10 of, of Top, Top Chef. Chef. Last in week. Seattle, right? Last it week. was in Seattle. We took our chefs on a boat to Alaska and they have okay. courses. Um, usually they, they do cook four or five courses, but we don't tell them how they're doing along the way. And at the end, we talk about it. And this was sort of head to head, course to course. Um, and, and you know, also, a lot of our guests in the audience got to taste the food, which I thought yeah. was really exciting. But I guess some viewers thought it was maybe predictable because if they knew who had already was winning as it went along, it got to be a little bit. Right. I mean, that, that certainly win. was something we worried about. But I also think that it made it more exciting because you could really follow along mm -hmm. and kind of root for that person. as it was going. Right. I think it created a lot of suspense. And all this just means people, by the way, are passionate about your show. Yes. The fact they care that well, much about your show. They do, and after 10 seasons, yeah. I get how it's hard to change this as well. Was, by the way, this was all a long way for me to get the word kerfuffle into the <laughs> I show. I thought you said it very well. Two minutes Super into the smooth. show, and we've already checked that box. All right, <laughs> let's get to today's take three. There is a new TSA rule. You may have heard about this yesterday. Beginning this month, actually next month, people can carry small pocket mm -hmm. knives onto passenger planes. That's significant because it's the first time you can do that since the attacks of September. September 11th. They're knives with retractable blades, a little more than two inches uh, and narrower than a half an inch. So your um, standard pocket knife, your Swiss Army. It makes their job more dangerous well, I think the issue, on the plane. too, is, you know, they're, they're not suspending the no water through security right. and all of right. that. So it's like, really? But yet you can bring in an object that has a blade. That's what I feel really strange about. I can't believe that I can't take, let's say, a jar of jam that I right. bought on my travels that's fully sealed right. onto an airplane, but someone beside me can have a pocket knife and I don't know about or it. Or a snow globe. I can't tell you how many times I bought globe. a snow globe for my kids because sure. they collect them and they're like, oh, sorry, you got to pack they're in your suitcase. They're militant about yeah. the snow globe. They've got the signs like, everywhere. Forget the snow globe. Yeah, well, like, no. really? Bring like, the knives. Forget like the snow globe. It's going to break my kids' hearts. I mean, I've had that argument with so many TSA agents. I've learned my lesson the I'm hard sure. way. <laughs> By the way, you can also bring now golf clubs, hockey sticks, and plastic wiffle balls. I'm from Canada, so hockey that's, sticks, I, I've seen damage weapon. done with hockey that's sticks. That's a weapon. Check the hockey stick. Let's just all agree we can check our yeah, hockey I'm stick. I think so, and the ski pole. Exactly. Check that too. All right, our take two, Taylor Swift opens up uh, in the April issue of Vanity Fair. She's the cover girl for that issue, and she kind of speaks out, lashes out a little bit about the way she's been portrayed she's in the press. she's defending herself. She's very defensive. Right, so she responds to Tina Fey and Amy Poehler, who at the Golden Globes made a joke about her. She said, stay away from Michael J. Fox. Fox's son, who was there at the Golden Globes, right. uh, because of her record, apparently, with, with men and writing songs about them. Well, that's uh, that's the issue, is that she feels like she's been sort of typecast and, right. you know, about this whole idea that she's boy-obsessed. Right. And, and so she responded in that article saying, for a female to write about her feelings and then be portrayed as some clingy, insane, desperate girlfriend in need of making you marry her and have kids with her, I think that's taking something that potentially should be celebrated and turning it and twisting it into something that is frankly a little sexist. Now, but I'll ask you all, she's 23 years old. I mean, anybody she dates is obviously going to be out in the public. I mean, she's going to be, you know, on every magazine cover for anyone she dates. So is it is it fair that she kind of has that rap? Well, she also spends her time you know, singing her songs about breakups, about relationships, right. as she should. I mean, she's an artist, though. Right. That's what she's inspired by. And I think that's great. But if you're going to sing about it, we're going to talk about it. Right. And by the way, those songs do really well. They're right. catchy, they're fun. And I think all girls can relate to them in some her way or another. Her fans love that, you know, the breakup songs. That's that's what her fans want from her. So she knows her audience. Right. And so I think if you're going to if you're going to sing about it and you're going to be seen, you know, in the pages of magazines with various boyfriends, have fun. That's great. But we're going to talk about it, too. She did say about her treatment from some other women, including yeah. those jokes from Tina and Amy. She said there's a special place in hell for women who don't support other women. Right. Amy Poehler was asked about it. She said, I feel bad if she was upset. I'm a feminist. She's young and talented. That being said, I do agree I'm going to hell, but for other reasons, mostly boring tax stuff. <laughs> and Tina also apologized. Yeah. <laughs> Tina apologized. She said, like two of your aunts, two of your old lady aunts teasing you at the Thanksgiving table. I think they meant no deep harm to Taylor Swift. They were just doing a, a bit at the Golden you know, a Globes. A lot of guys write songs about girls and breakups, too. How come yeah. they aren't portrayed 
as and a lot of you young know, guys being date many girl many crazy. women in Hollywood, and 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 that's fine too. I say don't take it so seriously. Have laugh fun. at yourself. Laugh well, at I your, think the best right. the best defense is always you know the best offense really is probably just to laugh at yourself and just make the joke first. Yeah. Agreed. Take three hosting hiatus. This is big. John Stewart says he's going to take a 12-week hiatus from The Daily Show over the summer. He's directing a film that he also wrote called Rosewater. It's his first time writing and directing a feature. He's joked many times in the past. He's been in movies before. He'd like to forget yeah. most of those movies, although <laughs> half-baked. His, his work in half-baked was incredible. Uh, this is about a BBC journalist in prison in Iran for 118 days. There's a funny angle to the story because the journalist actually was jailed in part because of his appearance in a bit on The Daily Show when Jason Jones interviewed him. The oh, Iranian wow. government didn't get the joke huh. and arrested him. So there's wow. John Stewart. There is a connection is, there, He's invested in this story a little yeah. bit. So he'll be gone for the summer. John Oliver is going to do eight weeks, and I guess he'll be in repeats for four weeks. So uh, no John We're Stewart this him. summer. We are going to miss him, but I think it's a, it's a perfect it's great for um, way for him to, to take that next step and challenge himself, too. I, who better to tell this story? I think he's become such a great political commentator in America, he and has. I think that he would probably have the empathy needed to, to make a great movie. Yeah, like he's this. great. We all love John Stewart, so wish him a lot of luck with that. Yeah, he'll do great at whatever he does. He's all right, now it. we have a look right, at the other headlines. Make a turn here for the headline. You're up to date right One now. Inch. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, I think just years that old. Japanese diet in general of fish and vegetables. As you would know, so it's good incredible. for you. That is an amazing story. Yeah. I loved seeing her. I had yeah. sushi last night. We're gonna live forever. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> All right, let's go down to Al. He's braving the elements in front royal. Remind us how this works once again. Okay, so go on today.com right now, and we actually hold for the West Coast, so I've been getting a lot of emails about that. Okay. So if you're on the West Coast, don't worry, but we have a lot here today, but if you want it, go on right now, because things, as we know, move very fast. There you go. Okay, let's start off. These are just adorable matching dresses. They're from me and Dolly, so you get a dress for your daughter and then a matching one for the doll. I love this. This is so me cute. and Dolly dress collection. The retail is $69, Forever Princess offering the newest limited edition spring collection. Okay, so as you said, there's five different options, but you get the dress mm -hmm. for your daughter, Love and it. then you get the little, little dress outfit. for the doll. And it fits any standard 18-inch oh doll, so any of the Disney, Disney princess dolls, and comes in sizes four through 10 or 12. So all those different options, it's so all cute. All these little t-shirts and skirts too, just adorable it, options Exactly here. matching. Cute. So the retail Love 69, it. the deal $20.70 for the set, that's 70% off. Wow, that is fantastic. Okay, over here, great pillows. These are throw pillows from Frog Hill Designs. You see, they come in all these different patterns and different colors. Right, and these are pricey, but they're designer pillows to begin with, so, sold in designer boutiques across okay. the country. So we wanted to offer them. You want to spruce up your home for spring. Yeah. The retail, $159. They're handcrafted, 18-inch square down and feather pillows from one of their best-selling collections. Right. Really nice. Sold in upscale boutiques, as I said, across the country. The retail, $159. The deal, $47.70. The grocery store, first, these messages. We should go give her a one, yeah. Still ahead, fellas, we're going to make you look 10 years younger with a simple skincare routine. Oh, I like to see that. And can too much praise be bad for your kids? After your local news. Now with more of today on this Wednesday. Coming up, you versus the grocery store in a battle of wits. We've got some strategies for you to outsmart the tricks of the supermarket and save you some cash in the process. Like, what do they do at the supermarket to outwit you? There's a whole music thing I didn't know yeah. about. They oh, change really? the pace of the music depending on how quickly they want to get you through the store. Huh. Yeah. Okay. They're Just sneaky. Slow it down to make They're you sneaky. spend more, exactly. I guess. Also ahead, when does praising your kids go too far? Some parenting advice so you don't hurt their self-esteem in the long run. And then beauty advice, and it's not just for women. Yeah, it turns out some of the guys want a little help, too. We want to have younger-looking skin as well, I guess. So we'll tackle some <laughs> of the main problem areas for men. That sounded so genuine coming from you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm going to stumble through that one. But first, let's head down to a man whose skin is always baby soft. Al Roker in Front Royal, Virginia, keeping an eye on the weather. Hey, Al. That's right, because I stay out in this, uh, this moisturizing yes. snow. Yes. Yes. The and and the, the ice Fresh pellets air. are actually a dermabrasion. It's a dermabrasion that keeps my You're getting my a natural exfoliation. So Absolutely. Helping us out all week.
always with our parenting issues. So I'm guilty of this. I like to praise and prop my kids up, but then you do wonder if we're, you know, having the wrong effect yeah, on the well, kids. We, what we is the know research praise. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do it the right way. All right, okay. so let's look at four signs that you may be praising your child a little bit too much. The first one you point to is that the kid's self-centered. Everything is me, me. It is that they're praise dependent. They're praising. They Aren't you going to tell me I did a good job, mommy? Right. And they're waiting for it. Don't or I get a gold? Accolades, even for the smallest exactly. thing. Exactly. How about being over competitive? This is really interesting and a big red flag. Mm -hmm. We find that. Okay, but if they're like tearing down the other exactly. person, not so good. Okay, so now you're going to walk us through ways to build our kids up the right way. And you first say, stress the effort and All not the smart. Natalie, this is like one of the most brilliant pieces of research. To learn on that one. That's good. Okay, you also say to ask questions, as you said. So or switch your right. praise. Is there a style of parenting? If you could describe yes. it, what would it be that's a healthy mix of giving praise but not too much? Well, mm -hmm. here's the thing. You want to balance. I mean, how much should you prop them back up? Well, here now we really want the competent part. Right. The, you want Learn oh, from the a, lesson. Yeah, and then you see what really holic. There's been a lot written and said that our culture, our society is a trophy culture. Yeah. That yeah. every kid gets a trophy. Yeah. How are True. we doing as a society in terms of... Not, you can pat yourself on the back and say, good job, Dad. I'm praising the right way. It is funny that we have a trophy for every sport. Yeah. It's and true. Like every kid gets Just showing up gets you a trophy. <laughs> exactly. Just breathing. Yeah, exactly. Show yes. more of us. Thank yes. you. Thanks, Michelle. You're welcome. Next. Skin care for men. Oh, you look so healthy and glowing, Willie. Right after this. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.